Hey guys, Tim Anderson here, uh, Anderson Garage. Appreciate you guys watching. Um, we're doing some new stuff this summer, hopefully um, more interesting stuff. Keep everybody uh, kind of interested in what we're doing. Um, we are getting quite a few views. Uh, we're not getting a lot of uh, subscribers. Uh, that helps us out. If you guys could uh, like and subscribe on any of the videos that you see, check out our other videos. Maybe there's something else you'd like to see. Uh, leave a comment. Um, all that stuff helps us. So we'd appreciate it. Uh, we're going to keep uh, this summer, we're going to try to keep putting some videos out. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to doing that. So appreciate you watching. Thanks again. Hey guys, today we're going to be working on uh, 2013 Ford Edge, uh, doing the brakes on it. Um, this process should be the same, I think, for um, any Ford Edge from at least 2007 until uh, this model, 2013. I'll be changing the pads and the rotors. Uh, we're going to get this wheel pulled off, get the car jacked up, get it so supported, get the wheel pulled off, and uh, we'll get going. Basically, just looking for that pad right there uh, that supports the lower control arm. Gotta get it underneath the biggest part of that. It's kind of hard to jack it up. Put this lower balance on the bumper, kind of hangs down a little bit. Now that's up in the air, we'll go ahead and buzz the lug nuts off. Got this nice DeWalt impact. All right, pull the wheel off. Now we get to the rotor, brake pads. So hopefully these brakes or these uh, bolts come out fairly easily. But essentially you've got this bolt here, you got one down here. Those come off and then you actually have to take, and that would pull the caliper, and then you have to take this bracket off which there's a bolt here and then one down on the bottom side. And once those are off, you get that bracket out of the way, this rotor should just come right off. So we'll get some tools and get started on that. Fairly easy. I should be able to get these to loosen up. Always inspect these pins just to make sure that they're not super worn. These seem like they're okay. I'll clean them up and put a little grease on them when I put them back in. This one feels a little bit stiffer.
I don't like to use the impacts on these because sometimes they'll catch and then rip that boot that's in here. There's a little boot right there. That one feels like it's sticking. So I'll have to wiggle on that a little bit. There it is. A little bit drier, you can tell. Grease is a little stiffer. The next thing is going to have to compress the piston that's in here compress that back in in order to do that i need to jump up make sure that there's not too much brake fluid in the reservoir so it doesn't overflow so we'll do that next once you get the hood open you can look right down in here there's a battery this will be directly in front of the driver's side steering wheel take that cap off kind of look down in that reservoir and make sure that the fluid is not too high in this case it isn't so we should be okay push that back down in there so it's flat and then we can start to compress that and I just always keep an eye on it while I'm compressing it to make sure if the fluid is coming up I can start to get some of that drawn out of there before it overflows all right um, so if you have C clamp handy I don't right now you can put a c-clamp on here and here and just keep working it back and forth to compress that in <clears throat> what ends up happening in order to get this off of here you have to relieve the the pressure that's on the pads because there's a ridge here and here from the wear and you won't be able to it's hard to get those pads to slip up past that so we'll try this and see if I can get it to go if not I'm gonna have to try to figure out where I left all my c-clamps that looks like it's working so you just go like that, get down here, and you just keep working that back and forth until you relieve the pressure on the pad. Seems like that's probably going to be enough to get this to come off of here, which it is. There it is. You can flip this over, just kind of set it up in here without damaging anything. And now we can see the pads. <clears throat> so now we've gotten it to that point. Now we can remove the bolts that hold this bracket those are going to be bigger I think those are 19 millimeter and they are One there and one down at the bottom.
and then you can pull that bracket off with the pads in it and take a look at the pads and see what they look like these really probably I'll get a new pad out and we'll compare it so new pad thickness really they're probably not that bad if you look at the thickness of them same with the rotor then you can just pull that rotor off of there like that you can see on this rotor how grooved up it is and it's just terribly terribly worn getting really bad at this point they start to go pretty quick once they get that grooved up so it was time to change them the other thing you're going to need to do once you get this off of here is you are going to need to compress those pistons all the way back into the housing so I just take a pad, an old pad and just keep working that back and forth until you get them back so that way when you put the thicker pad, the new thick pads in you've got plenty of clearance and take a wire brush, even a rag, just kind of clean the dust out of here. If you notice any wetness around these, it's typically an indication that they're leaking. You don't want that if they are leaking around here. If anything's wet, these are not. Um, you would want to replace the, the, the caliper as well. But in this case, they look like they're okay. And in my experience with these vehicles, as long as it's a Ford caliper, I've had, I had an 07, actually I still do have an 07 Edge. This is a 13. That 07 Edge, I've replaced pads and rotors on it several times, and I've never touched the calipers. Um, another thing, sometimes these hoses here, inspect those, make sure they're not brittle or cracked because they will dry out they also can collapse on the inside and what will happen is when they collapse on the inside when you push pressure it opens the hose up and allows fluid to the to the uh, caliper but when you release the pedal the brake pedal the line will suck down or collapse on itself and it won't allow that pressure to go out and that'll cause the brakes to then stay engaged all the time so just gotta be careful checking these I mean you can't obviously tell on the inside if they're bad but Typically, if you look at the outside and they're nice, flexible, they're not cracked anywhere, you should be fine. Alright, we'll go ahead and put the new rotor on. So, I basically try not to touch the, the braking surface. Take your rotor. Slide that on, make sure it fits, which it does. I went with Bosch Quiet Cast rotors. They're a coated rotor. Of course, this surface here, where the pads are touching, that coating is going to be gone. But the rest of the surfaces here, of course, the tops, the insides, the fins, and on the inside of the back there, That'll all still have coating on it. Um, they, they tend to hold up a little bit better. They seem like they don't warp. Uh, some of these aftermarket, you know, if it's not an OE Ford uh, part, they tend to not be quite as good. But for some reason, these seem like they hold up fairly well. So there's your new rotor. They also give you a hardware kit, this here. Those parts go in the caliper, so we'll go ahead and work on pulling the old ones out and getting the new ones put in.
All right, these brake parts kits come with several little tabs. Um, the old ones here, all dirty. New one here, and how you put that in is there's a wide tab on one side. You can see that wide tab right there, and a small tab on the other side. The small tab goes, if you're looking at that part, it would go to the outside. So when I grab the new part for this side, it's going to go opposite of what the part is for the other side, meaning, I guess I'll explain it easier, the wide tabs are to the inner part of the bracket. And you just take that tab, it's kind of, kind of a pain to get them started down in there sometimes, and just kind of work it in. And just get it to seat down in there like that. Just kind of snaps in. Same thing with the other side. Yeah, I just bent that small tab over, so I'll have to straighten that out. And there they are, all four of them. You can kind of see one, two, three, and four. And then once that's done, then your next step will be putting the pads in here. These pads, I always like to look at them and see if there's any difference in anything. Sometimes there's a left and a right. I think for the most part these are going to be the same. I don't think there's anything that's different about them. I've got three of them here in my hand and they all look identical. So that makes it easy. So then you take the pad get it started in on the outside there's a little flared area that's easier to start and then I just slide them over just so that the inside surface here is about even with this surface here same with the other pad And then you can just set that right over your rotor and get your bracket lined up with the holes that were there. I like to put just a little bit of anti-seize on the bolts, not nothing crazy, just a little bit. 
Um, people say to never do that. I've done it for 20 years and never had a problem with a brake system coming apart. Um, what I have had is brake systems that will not come apart because the bolts are rusted stuck in there. So I always do it for my stuff. You don't have to. Just use Permatex and I just put just a little bit on the threads, just enough to keep it from wanting to get locked in there. Put those two bolts back in on the back side. Push your pads over tight, make sure the rotor's in all the way. And those bolts are back here. It's going to be uh, this bolt here, and then that bolt right there. Make sure they're good and tight. Next we'll be getting the caliper back on. So these pins are cleaned up. Inspect them for wear. They look pretty good. I take some all-purpose grease. And I just lube them up. make sure that they're going to continue to slide in there because you don't want them to hang you don't want your brakes to hang up because these pins aren't lubed up now you've got two different size pins the bigger one I believe was on the top I can't remember for sure but I'm pretty sure that's where it's at yeah it feels like it and then I just kind of make sure that that pin is going to slide in there freely. There's nothing that it's hanging on. Same with the bottom. You don't want that to cause you an issue. The bottom one was a little stiff, so I think we're going to end up pulling this plug out and trying to clean that right there first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is the left side of the vehicle. The right side is identical. There's nothing different about it. So anyway, this piece here is the inside of it's a little bit stiff, so take a screwdriver and just kind of fold it down on itself. Careful not to rip it. And then grab the other side. You can pull that part out of there. And once it's out of there, you can take that small pin and just work that in there. Um, I think what it is, it ends up being, is that there's some rust from the, the housing on the outside of it here, and that kind of causes that pin to, to hang up in there. Because now that I've got it out of the housing, it moves nice and free, whereas before it was stiff. So, with that being said, I'm going to end up having to take a screwdriver scraper or something and just kind of just kind of clean that rust off of there. Careful not to rip it because it is rubber. Um, the more tools you have, the better this process will go. What I mean by that is if you have wire brushes and, you know, circular brushes that can go in stuff, if this is the case where yours has got some issues like this, um, I typically just kind of wing it. Clean it up with the tools that I have. Same with this here, just kind of go in there and just kind of 
old beat up screwdriver that I have here, nothing fancy, just kind of scraping that around in there. Then you can take and take a small piece of paper towel or something and just kind of poke it through there. Kind of push that stuff out, whatever's in there. Make sure that rubber's nice and clean. Same thing on the install, just take and fold it back down get it started you might have to use the pin or a screwdriver to kind of push it back through but taking it out is the easier part putting it back in is a little more difficult there it is back in I'll take our pin, try it again, and it's nice and free now. Nice and nice and free, it moves. So like I said, it just gets that build up in there. Just pop that right out, and, and now the pin's moving again. Simple as that. So put a little more grease on that pin. Grab the caliper, swing it back down. That's just going to set over. Just make sure that your rubber is in so you're not smashing it, pinching it. And then you can get your pin started back in. On the bottom, same with the top. Those are both 17 millimeter. So really not a lot of sockets that you need. 17 millimeter, 19 millimeter, ratchet, you have a breaker bar you can do it with a ratchet it just takes a lot of strength to do it if you don't have an impact you can use a breaker bar with that same 19 millimeter to take the lug nuts off it's not a big deal or if you have an impact you could do it all that way if you wanted I just prefer not to because like I said I don't want to rip the the rubber and then I just make sure that that caliper is moving nice and free on there which it is so that's good then once I get it to that point, I take my breaker bar again. I'm sure there's torque specs for all this stuff. I've always done it this way, never had a problem. Tighten it, make sure it's tight. Same with the bottom. And then that's it. The only thing you have left to do is to put your wheel back on. It's the reverse process of what we did to take it off. Um, like I said, the other side, the, the right side of the vehicle, it'll be the same process. There's nothing different about it. Same, same cleanup. Make sure that your, make sure that your pins are nice and free. They're not holding up on you because, like I said, you can do a brake job. And if you don't clean that stuff up, put new parts in here and here, clean it up, make sure it's good, within a short amount of time, your brakes are going to be bad again because everything's hanging up. You need everything to move nice and free. That way when the pressure is released, that caliper can relieve off of the brake pads. So, thanks for watching, guys.